to pray for a thing is simply to ask. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Your prayer is your act of asking a particular deity or the universe or what some people would say God it's your act of asking when you research the term prayer this means to ask see if you don't open up your mouth you will not get fed many people pray and they praise God they praise the deity they say good things of the deity but they never ask for the thing that they need and since they don't ask for it they don't ever get blessed with the thing that they need they think that God is just going to look out for them God does not care about your need for survival I will say that again God does not care about your needs for survival so God is not he doesn't care about that because he is not in this type of reality or she or whatever you think God is or it so don't get caught up when I say he she and all of that and don't get caught up on those uh, nouns or pronouns don't get caught up on that because I'm using this the term God very loosely anyway as those of you that follow my videos know that I really go past the term God because God just means deity or to invoke and when you use the term God you can be invoking just about anything and calling on just about anything and I'm going to get into that in this video so you have to ask the universe for a thing that you want this is your prayer prayer when you research it go look it up prayer means to ask see people get religious with it and they go to Webster and they look it up in Webster's and it's going to talk about praying to God and all that stuff but at the end of the day prayer means to ask and if you really research it and go back far enough it goes back into the term pray P-R-E-Y which is going into something else that I won't talk about here I'm not going to talk about that here but prayer believe that prayer and pray or P-R-A-Y pray and pray P-R-E-Y are definitely have a very uh, similar meaning attached to them so I'll, I'll go into that at another time I know this video is on prayer and I could go into it here but that that's a lot to cover um, in a short period of time um, so yeah you have to ask for the thing that you want to receive it and this is how it works and a lot of people that are religious see when they get into praying they, like I said, they praise the deity, they worship the deity, which is cool because you got you praise and worship the deity to get its attention. But in the occult, we make offerings. See, this is what we call praise and worship, or what you guys in religion call praise and worship. We make an offering to the particular entity that we are striving to invoke, or what you would call God. You see, we make an offering to that entity, and we make an offering based upon what that entity likes. Different entities like different things. And in the Bible, it was demonstrated like this because... You see that offerings were made to different gods. And people say that there's no need to make offerings anymore um, because that day and time is over. But that's not true. That's not true. Um, if you want to invoke certain entities, you will always have to make an offering to it. The, the blood of Jesus is only good for a certain entity. People try to use the blood of Christ and the death of Christ as an excuse to say that no offerings, offerings basically don't have to be made anymore because of the fact that Jesus died and paved the way so therefore no offerings have to be made but it's not true because that's only dealing with certain entities but the entity that most people that these elites worship I believe they still want the same thing which is blood and that's actually Jesus' death went towards that entity that deity Moloch that particular deity that likes blood Ogun in the uh, Orishas Moloch he loves he's bloodthirsty and this is who they offer and make offerings to as far as on that level you know what I'm saying when you start talking about blood offerings but different entities like different things some like praises and worship and more so like higher energies like praises worship thanks and gratitude love some beings come because and respond to those type of energies and those are the type of beings that you want to work with they work with in the 
disagreeable entities work with the lower energy beings that are powerful, but only powerful on the lower chakra level or root chakra level. They use the kundalini. Basically, these beings are powerful in the realm of the kundalini energy. And I know that's not going to make a lot of sense to you, but the kundalini energy ex itself exists within a realm in and of itself. And this is the type of energy that's used to invoke those lower level entities. This is why they want blood and sex and all that type of stuff and lust and a lot of lower energy type of things because these the, these type of deities that they want to attract for certain things are attracted to that. But you can call on the abundance angels for wealth. You don't have to call on lower energy deities for wealth. You can call on the abundance angels and stuff like that. But people you pray to, or you, which means to ask, you pray to the abundance angels for wealth. But Christians aren't taught this. They pray to God for wealth. And when you pray to God for wealth, you're just that just means to invoke. So you're not really calling on anything. And a particular entity may listen to your prayer, or your higher self, or your spirit guides will still listen to your prayer and answer your prayer. So yes, prayers don't go in vain, even when you pray to God. It's still asking. It's still the act of asking. And that's at the end of the day, that's the best thing, is to ask. So I'm not trying to kill people's dreams and say that you shouldn't pray. To God even. To God even. If you want to pray to God, that's fine. But what I'm saying is this, if you're interested in getting a better response, if you're interested in being more direct with your prayers, then I, just, I suggest that you definitely subscribe to my channel and begin to watch a lot of my videos because I mention other entities and deities uh, that different people work with to get results from different things. And really to get results from, say, for instance, if you are having trouble and you want a job, you want a job because of, you want money, right? So instead of praying for a job, pray to the abundance and entities for abundance and wealth. But you see... People don't believe in that. People don't believe in that. So basically, I'm going to be called crazy and get negative comments and things like that because I'm talking about concepts and principles that a lot of religious people just don't seem to understand because they want to just keep calling on God because that's what they were taught to do. They want to ask Jesus because that's what they were taught to do. But, I mean, you calling on Jesus, which is really like calling on Zeus, and Zeus is not... Zeus is a deity of competition. Um, but you can't call on Zeus for everything. So he may or may not respond. And when you call on Jesus, uh, really in essence you're calling on Zeus. If you want to call on that particular man that existed in the past that was a revolutionary, you're not supposed to be calling on Jesus because that was not his name. That was his Greek name. His name was Yeshua. So you call on Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? And that's a different tone. When you call on Yeshua. And I mean, that's another deity. You see? So... People call on Jesus and they get certain results and sometimes they don't. You know what I'm saying? It just all depends or whatever because a lot of entities always have a demon attached to them and people fail to realize that too. Each entity that you call on could potentially have what we would term a demon attached to it, which means because we are in a state of polarity consciousness. So when you call on, say for instance, you ask for money, you're going to get the money, but something's going to come behind that. Because every time you ask for something, something else comes with it because we live in a polarity conscious existence. So you might get the $20,000, but you're going to get the $20,000 worth of problems, as I always talk about in my videos. So all of this goes into praying. So be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for. Or be careful what you pray for. But yes, do pray. And do pray earnestly for the things that you want and the things that you need. And learn to merge your wants and your needs. Your wants are governed by the um, sun. Your needs are governed by the moon. Your needs are governed by the moon. And you have to learn how to balance these things, balance these energies, the solar and the lunar energy, to balance your wants and your needs and to make them become one. Because when you do that, this is how you can manifest even more. You can manifest even more because when you make your wants and your needs by merging your life together, your spiritual life together with your material life, meaning that you only need the things materially that is going to help you to advance spiritually. That's how you balance your wants and needs. You merge the two lives together. Now, that's not to say that you can't get you a Rolls Royce just because you're spiritual. That's not to say that. That's not to say that you still can't be an entertainer or a musician just because you're spiritual. It's not to say that you can't be a Hollywood actor just because you're spiritual. It's just that you have to learn how, if that's what your script your life script is and your higher life purpose is to be an actor because you may have needed to be an actor or to write scripts so that you could fulfill various life scripts in, in one life. 
So that's why a lot of people contract back and come back to be actors. Because when you're an actor, you can fulfill like as many roles as you play. Those are different life scripts that you can kind of, and different karmic, karmic situations that you can play out on movies. You plan out karma for those people that get into acting for the higher life purpose. Some people get into acting for money. And that's different. That don't have nothing to do with the higher life purpose, and I don't get into that. I'm talking about the higher life purpose, you see, is sticking to the script. So you merge your wants and your needs together. And so, and this is how you can get, and you do that through finding your higher life purpose and manifesting it. This is how you merge your wants and your needs together by merging your material life together with your spiritual life. So if you want to be an actor, there's certain things materially that you would need to get there. And it's nothing wrong with having a Rolls Royce if it fits your life script. Depending on your script, you may need that. Depending on your script. And a lot of people are just materialistic. So they're going to say it's in my script just because they want it. But they're not a trained script reader. And they're not a trained priest. So how can they say what's in their script and what's not? And a lot of people, don't, they don't know what's in their script. They're just saying they want that. And you have free will. You can get what you want. You have free will. You can get what you want if you just want it to. So get what you want. You don't have to merge your wants and needs together. I'm trying to teach you how to lessen your karma. See, I'm teaching you the spiritual way to do things. Mostly everything I talk about on this channel is the spiritual way to do things. It's, I mean, a lot of it, I might deal with finances. I might deal with economics. I might deal with children. I might deal with ETs or all type of information, but it goes back to spirituality. That's what this whole channel is about. The spiritual way to look at life and the spiritual way to do things. You see, and that's what it's all about. It's all about spirituality. You know what I'm saying? Advancing or whatever. So you learn how to balance those things out. You learn how to balance your spiritual self out with your material self and merge them together and merge them. You know what I'm saying? When you merge them together, that's when you will begin to enter into your light being. Your light being surrounds your material shell. And when you merge your spiritual self and your material self, you walk into your light body. Your light body surrounds your uh, material body. Excuse me. And when you merge them together, you can walk into your light body. And once you walk into your light body, that's when you begin to experience. And that's your vehicle to go to other dimensions. So you can only take the material body so far. You have to go into a higher level of your body, which is around you. But you have to activate it and go into it. You know what I'm saying? So... I know that I'm bouncing around, but all this goes back to prayer, believe it or not. The more conscious you are, the more, um, I guess you can say, the more sophisticated your prayers and your systems of worship will be. The more conscious you are based on your consciousness. And you can get results, y'all, from being more sophisticated. I like to keep things simple for the beginner. Like I said, pray to God. Simply ask. At least do that. Open your mouth and ask. That's all I'm saying. Open your mouth and ask. That's all you can do. That's all you can do, people. I mean, don't think that God, somebody's watching over you. And I want to clarify something, too, that I said. I said that God doesn't care about your existence here. And I want to kind of go into that more. God is not a material being. God exists on the fifth dimension up. God is not here in this dimension. Lucifer is here, and he's the God that's spoken of here in this dimension. It beings from Orion are the God. That is from the heavens, which is Uranus or Orion. Beings from Orion, which are the Luciferians. See, Lucifer was made God of this realm. Or is God of this realm because humanity gives over his free will to the Luciferians. You see, so they are God here. There's no God here. And God doesn't care about the material surviving because God is not matter. So it doesn't matter to him. Because he's not matter. Or she's not matter. Or it's not matter. You see, that's what it comes down to. So... God doesn't care about your survival here, whether or not you get your food stamps tomorrow. God doesn't care whether or not you get your, your uh, check tomorrow. God doesn't care whether or not you get a job. You see? Because God is not matter. So that's why you have to begin to call on abundance angels. Their God has designated and appointed angels to stand in the place of and to sit in his seat and to answer certain uh, calls and prayers in reference to material things. You see, it is the abundance angels that are responsible for wealth. When you ask for wealth, when you ask for creativity, you call on a certain entity to do that. You see, so, and many people that aren't religious, that are religious, they don't look at it like that. They just say, I'm going to call on God and Jesus for everything. And they don't get into getting into the older deities. They got to realize Jesus is new. The concept of Jesus is new. The concept of God is new. But when you talk about Legba and when you talk about Shiva, these are old concepts and deities that are much older than Jesus. Shiva is older than Jesus. Legba is older than Jesus. You see? 
but people ain't understanding. They're not understanding. Um, I just put the information out for those that know. So you gotta ask to get. You gotta ask to get. You gotta give to get, which means that a lot of times you have to make an offer or a sacrifice to a particular guy. Give so that you can get. Ask and you shall receive. This is how it works. This is how your blessings come. You must open your mouth. State your intentions to the universe. You must pray. You must ask. It's a mathematical formula and it works. So, I thank you for watching my channel. And on behalf of 13 Signs Astrology, I'll leave you in peace and prosperity.